Hard heavy and hair. Badass music. For badass listeners. With Pariah Burke. Rough Cut is one of the original Sunset Strip heyday bands, playing with and often trading members between Rat, Dio, and other bands of the era, though Rough Cut never quite achieved the same level of success as many of their peers. In 2019, they were still around, though in the process of merging into a group called Rough Riot, with members of Quiet Riot. When Rough Riot finalized its lineup change, now called Carlos Cavazo's Rough Riot, it was Paul Shortino, singer of Rough Cut, Amir Durak, one of two Rough Cut guitarists, White Lion's Greg D'Angelo on drums, Sean McNabb from Quiet Riot on bass, and guitarist Carlos Cavazo, also from Quiet Riot. Rough Cut's Rockin' Dave Alford and Chris Hager, not a part of Rough Riot, decided to continue on with a new lineup of Rough Cut. Alford, along with Shortino, was a founding member of the band, and Hager and Duroc, although not strictly founders, joined very early on before the band recorded its first album. Alfred and Hager auditioned and hired new musicians, then publicly debuted their new lineup in November of 2019. Leading up to and in the year and a half since that new lineup debut, Rough Cut has aggressively marketed themselves, letting the world know about the new Rough Cut. Slowed by the pandemic, they spent most of 2020 using social media to connect with Rough Cut fans, while not able to finish and release their new music until March 2021, when they simultaneously dropped a new single and music video for it with plenty of pre-release press and fanfare. According to Alfred and Hager, they never heard from their former Rough Cut and Rough Riot bandmates. In fact, Alfred's and Hager's attempts to contact them apparently went unanswered which is why they were so surprised when yesterday their former bandmates released their own album as Rough Cut, including their own version of the same single Alfred's and Hagar's lineup put out in March. The new album, titled Rough Cut 3, because other than a best of anthology, it's only the third studio LP released under the Rough Cut band name since 1985. The release of the album, which had no pre-release announcement or marketing, was accompanied by a press release asserting that the trio calling itself Rough Cut, Paul Shortino, Matt Thorne, and Amir Durak, are, quote, the three main men of Rough Cut, and are, quote, arguably the three most important members of Rough Cut, end quote. Further, without naming them, Alfred and Hager were accused of making, quote, false accusations and lies, end quote, about them. Within minutes of the release of the album by DDR Music Group, formerly Demon Doll Records, I reached out for comment from both versions of the band. My message directly to Paul Shortino went unreturned, though the owner of DDR and producer of Rough Cut 3, Lance V., said he would, quote, pass along my interview request to Shortino. Hager immediately agreed to an interview and brought along Alfred. This is my conversation with Rough Cut founding members and apparent torchbearers, Rockin' Dave Alfred and Chris the Count Hager, the day after Shortino, Thorne, Dirac, and DDR Music Group issued Rough Cut 3 and its accompanying incendiary press release. Chris the Count Hager... Rock and Dave Alfred from Rough Cut, thank you both for joining me on the Hard Heavy and Hair Show. Hey, man, it's totally our pleasure. Glad to be here. Glad to see you guys. Um, we were we were talking. You've got a couple of dates coming up. You've got at the end of July. You've got Georgia. You've got North Carolina. I bet it feels really good to line something up and be getting out on stage again. It does. Yeah. It, it feels great. We, we cannot wait, actually. We all feel like Energizer bunnies right now because <laughs> <laughs> you've been locked down for so long, you know, that uh, to get out and play again, it's a blessing. We're looking forward to it. Okay. <laughs> so refresh everybody's, refresh memories. everybody's memories. Who is the current Rough Cut lineup? Well, it's uh, it's myself. And it's Dave Alford. Uh, it's also Jeff Buner on bass um, and Darren Householder on second guitar. 
and um Stephen St. James. Stephen St. James as our singer. Yeah. Same people in the video lineup. Mm -hmm. Right. And I wanted to ask you about that. So uh almost three months ago now, back in March, you released the the song and video Black Rose. Yeah. Um first one in first new music in 35 years, right? At least. Yeah. How yeah. how was that? really good to, to release new music, especially music that we felt so good about. Yeah. See, we're working on, an, on a record right now. And once we started getting together and actually putting it together, Chris, he says, man, why don't we put out a video? And I'm like, that's a great idea. Yeah. So we ran it by everybody. And then we got Priya Panda on on board with us, you know. And uh, I mean, I'm t I think the video is great. <laughs> and um, it We've gotten really good feedback from it. And it gives us, like you said, you know, uh, it must have felt great. Well, it did. Once I saw it, I'm like, oh wow, you know, I'm so glad we did it. And we a lot of friends were involved. Yeah. yeah, we we you know we called in some favors definitely, and you know the other thing is we wanted to just we wanted to just give something away to the fans. You know we figure yeah. they've been waiting this long, and they're still we're still getting all this love mm -hmm. from people, and we figure hey let's 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 give them something. Absolutely. And you know it wasn't it wasn't free for us, but we wanted to make it free for everybody else. You Just know? seeing over a half a million views on Facebook alone uh, nice. gives me gratification. I, I love it. Every time I look at it, I'm like, wow, it's we did it. Yeah, it's creeping up there on uh, YouTube. YouTube as well. And uh, we'd like to just say that if if everybody would subscribe to our channel, we that would be a great help. Yeah, so uh, what is your channel? Oh, it's just Rough Cut, right? Yeah. So youtube.com slash Rough Cut, is that right? I believe that's it, yeah. Okay. You see the uh, video in there? Oh, well, I'm, I'm on the video now. So let me see what okay. the page is. Um, yeah, so if people just search for Rough Cut and Black Rose Black on Rose, YouTube. They'll find it. Yeah, um, and that's right. And the little thumbnail, you cannot miss Priya Ponda's face. Uh, <laughs> right. that, 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 I love that shot of her where she's looking in the rear view mirror. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. That is uh, a, a also, really. It, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Go, sorry. go ahead. I was just going to say it's a really emotional video. I mean, it. I. I like the video a lot. I'm also a big fan of Steven's soulful voice on that. I mean, you feel pain as a listener. You feel the pain that he's channeling in those lyrics. That's, that, that's, that's what makes a song great. Yeah. Just what you just put your finger yeah, on. I right? mean, he's amazing, <laughs> isn't he? He's awesome. He is. You know, having, the, having the vocals fit, you know, what the instrumentation is doing and, right. and having, you know, them all come together to where it, it, you know, emotes a feeling. What we love so much about it is we're, especially Chris and I, we're very, very, very passionate about and meticulous about our live show. And when we did this, he brings the passion to the vocals the way that we feel. Yeah. And it just clicks just like that. Yeah. It's magic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I met you guys when you debuted the, uh, the lineup the current lineup with Steven on vocals. Yeah, um, in, yeah, what, a year and a half ago now? Back in, uh, was it October, yeah, November? It was Black Friday. It was Thanksgiving. It, it, the day, oh, the that's Friday right, before. yeah. Black Friday, not last November, but the November before. Right, yeah. Yeah, and I love the way Steven sang. He was always on the skirt, leaning into the crowd. The skirt of the stage, he's just, you know, leaning in with the mic and... and that, yeah, that's his, that's his trademark, man. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's one of the reasons he's in the band. <laughs> he relates very well. <laughs> and uh, one one last com compliment, I guess, on the video. I really liked how it was understated. It it tells an emotional story, like we just talked about. But you know, and and it's got Priya Panda, lead singer of Diamonds. If you know people aren't familiar with her, 
Um, she's acting in it and it's got her story. And then it has you guys in a room playing, you know, it's not a lot of special effects. It's not a lot of cut scenes. It's rough. The, the video service is the song. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm glad that that worked out. You know, <laughs> it's another rough cut. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, it really is. We, uh, we threw it together pretty quick. After we decided that we were going to shoot a video, we got together with Jeff, actually, our, uh, you know, Jeff Buner, and came up with the storyboard for the video. And I think her part really fits the song yeah. really, really it good. It didn't, didn't take long, really. Yeah, we did threw it together, days. and it was like, you know, yeah. She's, sometimes those are the, the best, you know, things that just fall together really. it's the real deal though you know no iphone stuff or anything like that it was all shot through camera uh it's it's nice the the quality is really nice um i think this was a really good gift for your fans thank, thank you. you thank you so far um, everybody uh, seems to be enjoying it yeah yeah sorry about yeah, it. Put that on you yeah. and i'll put it on me go ahead sorry that's okay. Um, so I've been, uh, so you mentioned that you're working on new music and I've been seeing the photos of you guys in the studio and Jeff Buner being down there. Um, when can we expect a new album? Can you tell us? It'll be this year. Yeah. We're not going to tell anybody an exact date because we don't know, yeah. <laughs> but okay. it will be this year. We're half done already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right on. So we're, we're, uh, you know, we're, uh, putting resources together. We're, uh, actually doing it in different studio locations, uh, mixing in one place, you know, doing basic tracks in another place. So, you know, you gotta, you know, uh, you gotta do, uh, use what uh, resources you have. And because of the pandemic, yeah. it kind of put us in like, a. we spend the majority of the time here in Chris's studio and then uh, we we relocate over to Casa Casaba, where where Porno Bob mixes for us, and um, and we also send files back and forth to each other to do things. So it's a uh, because of the pandemic, we, it, it was really hard to just come together in a studio and do it. We all had to fan out and do it. Yeah. You know? Now we've been. We've been approached by a number of labels yeah. already, but so far we've we've turned down everything. We haven't found anything that we quite thought we wanted to go with yet. So what we think we think now we've found the right label, but uh, we're we're going to probably do most of it out of pocket and then go just go with a distribution deal. Um, we think that's a lot better way to go these days. So. Um, yeah. Control our own destiny. Yeah. Sorry to say. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Can I, can you talk a little bit more about that? I mean, I, I, so I talk to a lot of artists, you know, some like yourselves who've been around since the eighties, some of the newer generation that are just starting out, you know, since mm -hmm. CDs are the ones who started after CDs died, you know, and a lot of them are doing self-publishing. Um, I was talking to uh, Connie Bloom, lead singer of the electric boys, and he was taught, you know, he was lamenting the loss of MTV because, you know, MTV, right. you could get music out there. Everybody watched MTV. Well, How that went away a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you question? guys, well, you guys have been around, you, you put out music in the eighties, you know, the big, there was a ton of money. There was MTV. Big budgets. You know. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And now we're Love in a very different guys. world. <laughs> And yeah, we're, we're in a very a different world. So yeah. what, from your perspective as veterans of the music industry, how, how, do, how is music business now? How are you embracing it? Or, you know, what's the path for you? Well, it's like he said, yeah, you can get it. But it's first, it's like he said, the distribution is the key. Okay. okay. As long as you can put out a good product and you got somebody to distribute it, you can control your own destiny. Yeah. So, okay. So we're not going to try to do the promotion and distribution ourselves. Obviously, yeah. we've we've already got we've already got some labels yeah. that are interested in doing that. Uh, but when it comes down to, so you know, there there's it's like 
it's all about technology, right? It all comes down to how technology has progressed yep. and what you can do now compared to what you could do back then. Yeah, yeah. And back then, it's like if you wanted to do anything decent, you had to go into a very expensive uh, recording studio with a with an expensive producer and an engineer. And today, that's not the case. You can do it for a fraction of the price and still have a good sounding record. Um, that's not to say that, you know, big studios aren't, you know, still, they're still around yeah. and, and, uh, you know, if, if you can get that kind of a deal, but, uh, nobody uh, gives deals to rock not, bands, like not to rock bands. No, it's more like that's reserved more for the hip hop, yeah, yeah. Taylor Swift, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, pe people like that. But, uh, the, 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 on the, you know, on the top side of it, you know, uh, I think the, you know, is we can actually sit here and write a song and put it put it down on disc right away. And, you know, we've got a vocal mic. We just, sure. you know, pound out some drums on the keyboard and just and we can see what that sound is going to sound like. You can make right uh, you can make uh, adjustments earlier than you used to be able to. Yeah. Used to you'd run in the studio, you track basic tracks. And the guys would play to the drummer and everybody would be in there, even though everything ain't being recorded except for a scratch track. OK, then you had to wait. And it's every person's time. Now we can sit here in Chris's house and write something and lay something down real quick. And within the same hour, come back and say yeah, that part, I don't know, Throw and it out, fix it, keep it right there on the spot. You know, and that that is the beauty of technology to me. Yeah. It makes things so much e easier. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's one of the, the you know the other advantages. You know, obviously the other end of that is uh, distribution of music and how it's gotten out there. Yeah, that's a yeah. completely different paradigm now too. And we think we got a you good. Know. We're about to sign with someone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like before. It's like you 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 know, you needed that big, you know, uh, record deal with, you know, the, you know, the multi, you know, half a million dollar record deal and all that stuff. And uh, today, if you, if you want to, you can do it yourself. And I think for some artists, that's, that's, that's a good way to go because they'll never get that opportunity to release their music any other way. We're lucky because we have a legacy and so we're, we're able to uh, do things that brand new bands, doors open for us that don't necessarily open for brand new bands. True. But um, yeah, so uh, so it's again, it's a double a double edged sword because you get a lot of you can get a lot of crap out there. But on the other hand, everybody gets a chance to everybody gets a chance to do it. And there's a lot of different ways to get it out there. So. But Chris and I will never abandon our, I don't know how you say it. We might, we have a pact between the two of us that whatever we do, we'll never sound weak or like we won't put something out there that just doesn't blow your doors. Yes. No, you know, it's going to be top shelf period. Yeah, That's yeah. it. No drum we, machines. We, we use them. We to, use them to write to with. write with. Yeah. But sure. when we put out music, it's gonna be the real deal. You know. It, well, and you know, that's we, gonna be oh, I'm sorry to cut you off, Chris. I didn't mean to. I was just gonna say we have a we have a saying, if it ain't a hit, it ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, and then that's gonna well, be back another in the day. It was if it ain't I mean, it's not final till it's vinyl. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day. You know. Yeah. Well, that's, that's another advantage to doing it yourself. You're not, there's no label pressuring you to get an album exactly. out by a certain date. And, you know, you exactly. don't, you know, let's take this throwaway song just to get to 10 tracks and, and you know, well, you can and wait until you're ready. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. We, right. we experienced that very thing. Uh, so we know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I have to ask about something that is potentially unpleasant. Oh, we know. <laughs> I, I figured. I mean, <laughs> there's no way he didn't. So for people who don't know, um, this week, uh, the DDR Music Group, which is formerly Demon Doll Records, 
um, released out seemingly out of nowhere with no pre-marketing, no press release, other than the minute the album dropped, a new record by Rough Cut mm-hmm. and two oh. singles simultaneously, one of which is the exact same song you guys just put out. Funny, huh? Yeah. Except yeah. for it ain't. It's not the exact same song. Our song has different lyrics and melodies. We just kept the chorus. Yeah. And besides, yeah, go, go ahead. On. Go ahead. No, but go go ahead. And then I want to respond to some of the things yeah. you know that, that you've got to say. Um, okay. yeah, that that happened. And it was you, out of nowhere, like you said. <laughs> so yeah. do you have a question in particular about that? Or <laughs> um well, I wanted to talk about that. So I guess. Let's talk about Black Rose, which sure. you your t- your single is Black Rose. Their single is Bed of Black Roses, um, mm-hmm. which the same line is in both songs, choruses. The the title to the song is in. So, who wrote it? Who wrote it? Well, I wrote. Yeah, I wrote the music to that song. Um, Matt wrote the chorus, the chorus lyrics and melodies. Part of the melody. Now the, okay. the part of them yeah. and the version that they did, he also wrote the verse, uh, part yeah. of the verse melodies. Yes, yeah, part of the verse melodies now, and the lyrics. Our version, which we released obviously before they did, um, three months ago, uh, is uh, we uh, Stephen, our singer, changed the uh, verse lyrics, and if I don't know if you've listened to to both of them, but. You'll hear a marked difference oh, yeah. in the in the verse, uh, vocals, melodies, and uh, phrasing. Um, you know, and so, yeah. Um, the thing about that is, is that we went and and I, I listened to their. I, I just went and listened to the sample of all the stuff they did, mm-hmm. and you know, they didn't even bother to. Uh, redo it that's just that's the that was a that's me playing a drum machine yeah it's all uh that was done over here those are yeah. my guitars yeah. and they added some stuff to it um they embellished it but uh and they did that on a couple of other songs as well that we yeah. had written yeah. before collectively collectively yeah. before we had we'd broken up and we you know that really took it was like yeah. wow yeah, it was a slap in the face, but you know, look, we have no ill feelings towards those guys. Uh, I will say we dropped our single months before they did this and yep. we were going out and playing and we have a record coming out. And well, so, well, you know, the, the thing is, 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 you know, uh, I'm going to say this, there, it, it's a cheap shot. It really and is. And the thing is, is they had, they had every, uh, you know, we made every effort to make Rough Cut work yeah. with the original members, and they just weren't having it. You know, it's like one person didn't want to go out and play shows, and then, and then the know, other person that, wouldn't go unless that person went. Yeah, and then, and then, and then the Rough Riot thing came along, yeah. and then that didn't work out. And so, you know, we, uh, you know, put a lot into making that work especially me, man. I mean, I worked my ass off on that yeah. and it just didn't happen. And so Dave and I, you know, we, we don't want to sit around. Yeah. Why not? Gonna- and that's why I went and called Steve and said, Hey, Steve, you want to come over and write some songs? And then I said, Hey, Dave, come on over and listen to these. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, Dave knew Steven from before as well. And, uh, and so that's how we got started. And, um, so there, what they did is is really weird because it's more of a compilation, and ha- over half of the music that's on that record is old stuff. That's me playing drums, him playing guitar. Yeah. It's stuff that we did with Brad Aaron, and yeah, that's a, kinds they, of they, they kind of they there's kind of no threw, mention of either of you in the marketing oh, no, material no, for that no, album. It, well, they not only that yeah, they, they they screwed us over on the on the royalties. As yeah, well. they they cut us out. And uh we didn't cut them out. <laughs> no. In fact, uh when I when I when I registered uh, Black Rose, I was very generous to man. We to, really to were out yeah. with that. And uh so that's what tells us that it's it it's it's out of, you know, spite. They're, you know, they think that, you know, we should have 
asked them or told them that we were going to do this. And remember, it's, prior, them guys didn't want anything to do with that. I mean, they wouldn't, you know, I couldn't get Matt to return my call. Or, or I either. I couldn't, I would text them. I would talk to them. Even Amir told me, he says, well, that's, that's really, you started that band, Dave, and I, I've got Julian K and all this other they, kind of stuff. They basically weren't interested, interested until, until our single came yeah, out. Yeah, once we dropped yeah. a single, then all of a sudden, boom. So, you yeah. know, I don't, I don't care, you know, yeah. um, I don't, you know, I, I, you know, I'll say it, I'll, I'll be, say it straight out. I think it's a cheap shot and, you know, they're perfectly, you know, I can't stop them from doing it. But uh, and it's and also it's going to be uh, we'll see when it comes to the trademark and all that, you know, that could turn into a legal thing. So uh, but it's not going to stop us. The music that we're creating right now, our fans are just dying to hear it. Once they heard Black Rose and saw the video that it's on now it's yeah. totally yeah. on and we got some real talent in the new lineup yeah so you know it's like hey we you know fans we can't they can take their pick you know yeah. but you know it's like you know a lot of people will say well without Paul Short you know it can't be a rough guy and well, we say we thought well we say yeah. we say bullshit right because <laughs> when I I've, I haven't gotten any negative feedback about our singer much less talking about Paul. Yeah. I mean, the, really. I'm, it was really amazing. They, we expected more pushback, pushback yeah. from fans, and, and it never really came. We you know? we have no, totally like I, like kept I said. our integrity, you know, totally throughout this whole process. We have done everything the right way. We won't, like we said earlier, we won't just release something for spite. Yeah. Or something I mean, like to, that. To me, it sounds like the thing was mixed through a freaking tablecloth <laughs> i know i know i hate to say that but it, it is true uh, i've but, listened to our black rose and i put on the old black rose that i'm playing the drum machine on and it's about this big compared to our black rose you know <laughs> so we're giving you some good poop here man right yeah <laughs> well to to your point of not first. hearing any complaints from the fans like like we talked about i was at the debut of your current lineup show your your first live performance as a band the five of you with three new members mm -hmm. and everybody in the audience was rocking the hell out you know uh -huh. they loved your show they love you know and these are people that have been rough cut fans for years at least half of them i mean some of them right. chris you and i went out uh, with a couple of people before the show and i was watching them right. loving yeah. steven's vocals you know and yeah. darren and jeff playing in the band um, yeah, I mean, yeah i mean frankly uh we expected we expected more pushback and it never materialized and i think the reason why is like i said our, our integrity is intact let the music speak for itself yeah and that's what we're doing. The new stuff that's coming out on our record, uh, there's only two other tracks that those guys were even around when we started yeah. writing them. And one of the songs, is, Chris wrote 100% of the music. Of the music yeah. you know, and I came up with a little melody and then the hook in it. But we've decided to just get rid of all of that and write all new lyrics and melodies to the song that he wrote. Okay. And it'll be on the, it's, you know, it's, but unfor it'll, it's unfortunate, yeah. but you know, the rest when, will be all new stuff. When you yeah. see, yeah. Our, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to go back and re-release a bunch of crap that's no. been laying around for right. 20 years, you know, yeah, I can't um, believe they did that to be honest. With you, you know, well, <laughs> you know, the thing, that, the thing that, you know, uh, again, and then I think I'll probably let this go is that, uh, for them to release, uh, you know, black rose, uh, like that is like it's I mean, really unprofessional well it's like me. couldn't you couldn't you have just written something else and then you could still put it if you want to put it on your record but to, to release it release it, it as a single is like kind of you know it it, it, it says something about yeah. them and yeah it really what, are you, what are you gonna do you know it, well it i don't yeah i i don't it happens I don't know the guys personally that we're talking about, 
but it certainly seemed to me like it was a direct shot across your bow. It was, yeah. Yeah. Um, Next. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can yeah. talk about it as much as you yeah. want, man. No, that's all right. You can. Yeah. yeah. We're, look, we're okay with it. We're going to keep doing our thing. That's it. Yeah. Well, it, the timing is interesting because, I mean, yes, we had COVID putting, you know, the music industry as a whole, including you guys, on hold for about a year. That's, but yeah. you weren't quiet about the the 2019 lineup and the or you know and getting That's together it. and you've you know we're friends on facebook you're posting pictures yeah. all the time in the studio you're recording new yeah. music you're you know it's yeah. not like you were very quiet about being rough cut no it was you pretty, know pretty transparent i guess that. that's why i said our integrity is still intact because we did everything right you know we didn't do the sort of say shot across the bow thing you know so yeah, yeah. Our, our, our i mean our our motive was just purely to release music that we loved and we yeah. thought other people would like to yeah the fans were starving so, for yeah. new stuff you know so yeah, i mean I you saw was... the band to be honest with you when we played that show that really energized us it wasn't yeah. even a month before we were in the studio writing new stuff yeah. after we played that yeah. show we, that you we, came to. We, and that was our first show. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we, you know, we, we only had a couple of rehearsals and yeah. go in and do that. And uh, it, it we just thought played. it turned out really great, you know. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. You know, and it, and it's, yeah, we enjoyed playing it too. It was, <laughs> it was a very good show. Yeah, yeah. I like that room. Good acoustics in that room. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah, that? The Bossa Nova called? Ballroom. Bossa yeah. 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 Davey, nice did, Davey did a really good job. Yeah. 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 No, that, that's a good venue. We want to go back there. Yeah. They did survive the pandemic. So you they guys did. can play. Good. Yeah. That's, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. All right. Well, you know, uh, uh, you know, those guys, Davey, uh, Jones, is our, yeah, is our, you know, as a friend of ours and I'm, I'm glad to hear that he made it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, if he wants to do some kind of big post COVID grand opening, rough cuts available. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll tell him if you don't get to him first. <laughs> yeah. uh, please do. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, so you, I know you said you don't want to do any of the old songs. Um, but what, one, one quick observation I do when I heard you play live and when I heard black Rose, I don't compare you, the five of you now to the Paul Shortino led lineup of the eighties. You're a different band, okay. but That's it's good. a different, you know, it's, it's, there's still, you know, Chris, your signature guitar playing and Dave, your drums, yeah. but it's different to compare is an un, is unfair, you know? Yeah. It's kind of apples and oranges and right. really it's right. a different, it's, it is a different band. What we and love wanna... about it is we were able to keep the sound, you know, especially the two of us. So when you hear the new music, you can tell that's rough cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But having the new lyrics and melodies and vocals, you know, the signature of St. James and stuff, and the way we attack writing now is uh, where the twist not, comes in. Not to mention attacking the guitar. Yeah, yeah it's, a, <laughs> it's a twist. It's a, so it's like the good sound that we've always had with a new edge with a new fresh yeah. you know edge yeah. to it and by the way when we say we're not going to do any old stuff that doesn't mean we're not going to do any old stuff live yeah play oh, of course we, we know that, we know that people still want to hear yeah. that stuff so we'll be play, we'll be playing uh, a, a combination of classic rough cut yeah. and new rough cut yeah. that, we're just not going to release any old stuff. we're not going to yeah we're, it's going to be all new music we're not going to pull anything out of the uh, vault yeah <laughs> well that's what i wanted to ask is you've got shows coming up are, are you thinking of maybe recording a couple of live tracks maybe your new lineup performing you know some of the old hits um, you know it, dep it depends or it, there are first shows so i mean i wouldn't mind if if i if i think 
the, the thing, that that you have the capability. Yeah, I know they've got the video capability and the audio. Like, and, I've checked into it. It's, yeah, so yeah. Uh, you know that 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 could be a possibility. You know, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, it it might like be a nice live transition. <laughs> yeah, you know, because like I was saying, Paul, uh, Stephen St. James is not Paul Shortino and vice versa. No. They're yeah. different. There's they're apples to that's oranges. Right. Um, and he's not trying I, to be, you know, right. yeah. And I like the way Paul sang, you know, the old songs, but I also like the oh, way no Stephen way. sings the sure. old songs. Yeah. yeah. Paul's a great so, singer. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know? So I think maybe Even your fans that, might like a couple of live tracks, if not a live album. So that's very true. Hey, just gave us a good idea. <laughs> well, you know, give me an associate producer credit or something. If you do it. <laughs> No problem. We'll give you credit on that. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, a, can you give us any hint when we might hear the next new song? Um, you know, um, it, 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 here's the thing. We, we were toying around with the idea of maybe uh, throwing another release out there in, in a couple of months because we don't want to uh, keep people waiting too long. And so it depends on uh, how long it takes us to release the record. If we find that we're going to, and that's being, that's being, if we get on, right? really close to being able to release the record, then we won't drop another sound. Yeah. But if we fought, but if it, if it looks like it's going to take a little bit longer then I think we will actually. Yeah. yeah. We probably will. Well, I'm, you know, I'm we have, looking we have forward no to qualms that. about that, you know, I'm Just, looking forward you know, to that. I really like Black Rose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. See, we wanted to release a ballad first because that's what we're known for. Rough Cut's really good with ballads, you know. So we yeah. did that to give people, you know, we, we didn't even sell it. We just gave it to the fans, okay? Yeah. And, uh, and to be honest with you, and I love it. It's very, it's one of the best tracks that we've done. And uh, but the stuff that's coming out after it is just as good, if not better. You know, there it gets a little more into the heavy stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, we're gonna we're gonna rock you out. Yeah, it, it really <laughs> rocks. Okay. In fact, I'll I'll tell you a little secret. One of the songs has a little bit of hip hop in it. Okay. <gasps> and you wouldn't believe how good Steven is at it, too. It's really amazing. Just a little flavor. Yeah, know. it's really okay. good. We can't wait to unleash it. Not so much that we're going to alienate anybody. I don't no, so, no, no. I, I Maybe I shouldn't have told you. No, it's, uh, you know, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, so that's, we're, we're that's good. That's got my imagination going. Oh, that it did mine too when we were, I'm sitting there and, you know, we're, Chris and I are producing everything and, I'm sitting there with Bob and, and I'm going through the stuff and I look at Chris and I go, is this going to work? <laughs> yeah, was, Stephen, it Stephen was laid it on us. And, you know, you know, at first we were, we were a little bit reticent at first. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then when we put it down yeah, yeah. Uh, onto disc, it was like, yeah, um, we got something yeah. here, you know? And it's a lot of fun too. I want to say that to our fans, uh, for, um, the new material it's really fun to play it's fun stuff yeah it's like you said how stevens relates to the audience so well it's yeah. like that this stuff it's is going to really be really fun stuff. conducive to what he does musically yes on stage yeah, yeah. i'm getting chill bumps right now because <laughs> i get goosebumps i can't wait for us to play i'm already practicing <laughs> right on mm -hmm. Well, I wish you guys the best of luck with the upcoming shows. Um, is this the start of a tour that you're trying to put together? Um, well, you know, we're just probably going to uh, start off with flyouts, right? And okay. uh, then, then uh, we're we're looking we're to get on to get on a tour. Well, eventually. do some, we'll do some festivals, probably uh, flyouts, and then we'll see about we'll see what's out, what's open, what opens up from there. Right. Once we yeah. once the record is dropped, then we're we'll be looking to pick up tour dates. Right. Okay. 
All right. Anything else we should know? Uh, you know, just uh, uh, keep an eye out. Uh, you know, like I said, if you uh, our if YouTube channel, go to our YouTube right. channel and subscribe, we'd really appreciate that. Right. Um, you know, uh, we uh, we're going to be uh, you know keeping it fresh. We'll be talking to people a lot, and uh, you know, such as yourself, yeah. and uh, keeping keeping people apprised of what we're on what we're doing. And uh, we've, yeah. we've been doing a lot of interviews. And uh, we can't wait to get out there. So, all right. Uh, so, your YouTube channel, and then on Facebook, it's Rough Cut Official is your page. Uh, um, so, facebook.com slash com is actually our web page. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a web page. There is a, there is a, if you just, if you're in, if you go to Facebook and just type in Rough Cut, our, our page will come up and our group will come up. And, uh, so just type in rough cut and you'll see but they'll both you'll get a hit on both of them. Well, we do have a new website that is up and it's roughcutofficial.com. Yeah. And you'll okay. be able to find, you know, live dates, uh updates on what we're doing, merchandise, everything. Yeah. Right on. All right, Rock and Dave Alford, Chris Hager, thanks so much for joining me. Ah, you're welcome, Price. Pleasure, man. Really, really appreciate coming on, man. Thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Remember, to hear the music discussed in this interview, stream the on-demand Hard Heavy and Hair show at pariahrocks.com. That's P-A-R-I-8-H-R-O-C-K-S dot com. Also hit pariahrocks.com to stream or listen on a radio station near you. The regular two-hour Hard Heavy and Hair show with me, Pariah Burke. Hard Heavy and Hair is your weekly dose of hard rock, heavy metal, and hair bands from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 20 teens, and today, including the latest new releases, your old favorites, and deep cuts and rare hair, along with rock news and trivia.